Hey guys, Cody Barton here. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I want to address a question that I get really frequently, which is, Cody, what do I do if I get under contract with the seller and they want to cancel? Obviously, you know, it's scary. It's, it's hard to, you know, chart those waters when you aren't really sure how to handle that. So that's exactly what I want to do in this video and show you exactly what I would do to be able to resolve that situation so that you can make sure to put money in your pocket on that deal instead of losing out. So this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert for those of you that you've started your real estate investing business and you're really excited to get everything going as this is just one of those things that happens in the business when, as you do enough deals, it's going to happen to you as well. So I'd rather you be prepared than be freaking out and not knowing what to do or how to handle it. And for those of you that are seasoned real estate investors that have already been building your real estate business. I know you've had the experience, you do all of the work to market for the deal, you follow up, you follow up, you follow up with that seller, then you finally get it under contract. And now, you know, it's it's time to celebrate, right? Well, technically, you know, I wouldn't celebrate until it actually closes and you get that paycheck and the deal is done. Because one of the things that can happen is, you know, the seller might decide to cancel or they go dark on you where you just suddenly you can't get a hold of them. Your title company or attorney can't get a hold of them. They just fall off the face of the earth. So there's a couple ways to handle this. And, you know, really, um, as a real estate investor myself, I really like to handle this based on the situation. And so recognizing that we're all human and you know, things change in people's lives and we will let sellers out of agreements. Our company will let sellers out of an agreement if they truly are just, you know, hey, we're not going to sell anymore. We need to stay here because of the kid's school district or our plans fell through for moving out of state or whatever that situation might be. If they truly are going to stay in the home, they don't want to sell, we will let them out of the agreement. And so we always will, you know, kind of gauge based on the seller's, you know, kind of attitude and mindset and you know, their communication with us. But a lot of times what happens when they go dark on you or they decide, oh, I'm not going to sell anymore is because of one reason and it's money. It's because they went under contract with you and you're going through the process to get the deal closed successfully and they get a random phone call or they talk to somebody else that's an investor that decides to try to pay just a little bit more money than you were to get that deal and the seller thinks, okay, well, if I can get 5,000 over here, I'm gonna cancel with that first buyer and move on to this other buyer. And so that's where you as the business owner have to protect your business. We're in business to make a profit. This is not a charity. Our business has to be profitable for you to be able to afford your rent, your mortgage, your lifestyle, you have to make money. And so, you know, part of that process is making sure that you have you know, good purchase contracts in place that have all the right protections in there for you as the buyer. Um, because one of those things that we have in our purchase contract, and um, if you do want to get access to the purchase contract that we use in our business, um, it's, you know, we use it in Arizona and Florida. You'd have to check with your attorney if it's something that would work if you're in another state. But what you can do is go in the description below and you can download the purchase contract for free so you can get access to that. But um, we have language in our contract that if we are going to be buying the property, we can file something called a memorandum or a notice of interest in the property. And so um, in short, what is that? It's basically a very formalized way of saying, hey, I'm a buyer and I'm planning to buy your property. You're a seller. You're planning to sell the property to me. And I just basically am uh, filing that with the county that I'm buying it in. And so now the county recognizes that. So if they decide to go try to sell it to another buyer behind our back, what's going to happen is it's going to pop up and it's going to block the sale from happening. And so it's different per state. Um, and that's where, you know, I would again suggest that you follow up with an attorney. Um, if you do plan to use an agreement like that, because it's different state by state, but that's what we can do in Arizona and in Florida. And so that's one of the many things that helps protect us within our purchase contract. Um, but you know, th so that's one of the things that you have to do to protect this deal, protect that deal that you could potentially assign and make five, 10, 15, $20,000. So you get that memorandum or that notice of interest in place. And then 
the next stage, if, it, if they're really not cooperating and they're trying to you know, sell to somebody else, currently going through this right now where a seller um, wanted to wait months to close and he, you know, uh, as his choice, wanted to wait a few months to close and then now we get down to closing and now he recognizes he can sell it for a little bit more to another buyer. So he's trying to now sell it to somebody else. And so that's why we filed that um, memorandum so it would you know, protect our interest in the property. And then you know, the next stage is potentially getting an attorney involved. And this doesn't have to be a scary process. Um, obviously consult with your legal counsel in whatever state you might be in. But we get our attorney involved and he simply sends out for a couple hundred bucks, he sends out a demand letter that says, hey, Mr. Seller, you have a legally binding agreement with you know, Cody's company and you need to perform, otherwise we're gonna you know, file a lawsuit um, and go down that path. And so um, the, you know, usually once you send a demand letter, um, most of the time in my experience, um, we've found that when we get our attorney involved in communicating with that seller, they usually just say, dang, you know, I'm just gonna move forward with the agreement and we'll go to a successful close of escrow. So um, just wanted to share that, you know, for those of you that are newer in the business and trying to understand, you know, how to handle that situation, um, you could always go into the Facebook group that we have as a community. You go to the Creative Finance with Pace Morby Facebook group, um, and you could find you know help in there um, with people that are doing deals and that have been through that situation. And my team's in there as well. For those of you that are real estate investors and you've done deals and you've had those situations happen, that's how we're going to handle that. But again, I really want to encourage you. You know, treat people right. Uh, you know, we never want to pull the wool over someone's eyes or anything like that in this business. We want to be, you know, respectable individuals and do the right thing for sellers. Um, but we also expect them to honor the agreement that they made to us as we're in business to make a profit. Otherwise, what's the whole point of even doing the business, right? So um, hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions or need any you know, clarity on this, or you'd like to see another video, maybe answering any questions that you might have, make sure to comment those below. I'd love to get those answered for you. And as always guys, if you get any value, make sure to like, uh, hit that notification bell. We'll see you in the next video.